Hello and welcome to the Listening Post's unboxing channel on YouTube. Today we're unboxing Yamaha's brand new NSSW200, their little baby subwoofer that's designed to go with some of their sound bars and mini systems. This little sub is actually a rock star as far as its performance, which is why I'm very happy to share it with you today. Now, first of all, some of the wee features. It's not designed to be a big sub. As you can see from its size, uh, weighs 10, 11 kilos, something like that, so it's modest in its size. It's about 100, as I said, 120, 130 watts. Um, but it gets remarkably low, and that's why it's a, an excellent little thing to add with to a soundbar or mini system that may not have all that punch and slam at the bottom end. So, without further ado, let's have a look. The, the packaging's relatively muted. Um, it's a light brown box. Uh, it's got model information on all sides, and then a serial number with a scan sort of thing on one end. Opening these is really, really straightforward. A simple slice at the top, and a careful little drag. We can open this easily. Now, the first things on the top are just some of the very basic bits of paperwork. We've got our uh, contact information about international things. We've got the manual. This is a, 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 a you know, printed manual. They don't have a CD-ROM or anything. And a New Zealand and Australia warranty card. There's a couple of pieces of good-sized polystyrene to ensure this product reaches us in one piece. And then, stello tape to the top is a basic interconnecting cable. Now this particular one is a big long 3.5 mil mono control cable that enables this to be linked to a home theater amplifier or soundbar so that when you turn it on this turns on for you as well. So it's an excellent feature. Now that's about five, five, six, seven meters long. Now this is a relatively compact sub, so getting it out is, is, is quite straightforward. Now some simple little nicks of the cello tape that holds together the bubble paper, and we can easily get into this quickly and have a look around. Now the first thing you'll see is that Yamaha has opted to put its power switch and volume control on the front. Now this is ideal for some people, particularly if the subwoofer is towards the back, or like many, you don't want to muck around too much with the settings. A simple on-off, and then volume is probably the 95% of the things that you may do with a subwoofer once you've set it up. It's a front-firing sub, and this is, as I spin this around, I want to show you something. See this port? It's at the side, and also you can see, and I'll Please hang around for some photographs where I'll show you some close-ups. This particular design of port it was first established in Yamaha's uh, flagship speakers, the NS5000s. Now those beautiful reference quality um, speakers have created a real trickle-down, an immediate trickle-down for some of the things that they have used from a design perspective, and this being one, this new and unique port. <clears throat> Looking at the back, you'll actually see how well this thing is appointed. Um, it's got speaker in and out, allowing the onboard crossover to help filter the low frequencies away from your smaller speakers. It's quite unique in its price. It's also got a stereo or mono input. Um, so we've got left or right inputs as well as an, in an input 3 specifically for the LFE. Working along from there, we've got some settings or switches associated with how to power this on and off. This is the auto standby on off. So this is where, um, in the off position, this will remain on at all times and only respond to the switch at the front. In its low setting, this will uh, use a relatively small input signal before it will power itself on and then wait for a relatively, a very low uh, um, signal to drop away. So if you turn off your amplifier and wander away, five minutes later this is going to go into standby automatically. The downside to that, of course, is that if you listen to music at a very low volume, this may, may cut in and out. Um, it's got a high for one of those reasons as well. In other words, if you start, if you want it to kick in only when you're listening to volume, uh, sorry, loud volume music and so on. And um, so this feature is excellent. And again, one of the reasons that it's got that control cable is that this is a little bit hit and miss sometimes, depending on the volume you listen to things at. So the control cable can go all the way back to your stereo or your 
uh, AV receiver and be toggled on and off directly via that um, trigger cable. Okay. The next um, unit over here is, of course, the um, volume control. Now, this is a high cut or high filter. The subwoofer will always try to produce the lowest frequency it can. You're simply setting the highest frequency that you want. So if you've got very small speakers, this is going to be set a little bit higher. If you've got relatively large speakers or are just wanting to do the low frequency effect, then you're going to set that relatively low. There's a relatively large heat sink, and this is protected with a bit of steel. And then, of course, the power cord, which is protected and strapped up out of the way with a little bit of foam here. Okay. Last but not least, we've got a phase switch up here, uh, which is basically in and out of phase. Nice to know that it's got that. So, looking at this excellent little subwoofer, uh, the Yamaha NS SW200, 130 watt, Billy Bones basic, but excellent, excellent price point and excellent quality sub, uh, unboxed here at the Listening Post in Christchurch, New Zealand. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more, subscribe to our channel.